Hello, um, I'm going to show you how to fold a regular heptagon, uh, so seven-sided polygon, uh, with origami. And this is an exact construction uh, that you can find in a paper by Tom Hull um, that you'll see in the video description. So let's get started. All right, so basically the idea that um, we're trying to do here is to construct one seventh of the angles in a circle. So if a circle has two pi radians or 360 degrees, we want to construct the angle two pi over seven or two, uh, 360 degrees over seven. Now you don't need to worry about that necessarily, but that's essentially um, what we're going to be doing here. All right, so the first thing we need to do is fold our paper in half um, horizontally and vertically. And ultimately it's not these, well, we do need this horizontal crease. So let me make that one nice and tight. Um, I don't need to make my vertical crease too, too, too super tight because um, It'll just serve to distract us later. We mostly just need it um, to help us fold some other creases. Now, as I go, I'm going to draw in some of these creases with my pen so that you can see them a bit better. So there's my horizontal. I'm going to fold in my vertical, but I'm not going to draw it. my vertical. Next thing we want to do is we want the bisector here and the bisector here. So I'm going to fold this to this line and this to this line. So I'm going to do the top first and I want to line that up as perfectly as I can especially in early steps um, you know we want to be as exact as possible and most of these I'm just I'm gonna fold the paper one direction and I'm gonna fold it back the other direction and I'm gonna do the same thing on the left hand side and I'm lining that up perfectly as I can, putting that crease in. All right. So we've got these two creases in. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to fold, or essentially what we want to do um, is find the midpoint between here and here. And so what we're going to do is we don't need the entire crease, and it can be helpful. Let's, let's go ahead and fold this top one back. Um, so that can be helpful to uh, line these up. And all I really care about is making a little pinch right here. I don't need the crease all the way across. So I'm just gonna make a little mark right there. Okay, so that's um, a point that I care about. And I also care about this intersection right here. So while I'm not gonna draw these lines all the way across, I am going to just highlight that point and maybe I'll, I'll do the cross there as well. All right. So what we're going to do next um, is something called the belloc move. And this is the origami axiom that allows us to trisect angles and fold regular heptagons. And so what we're going to be doing is we want to fold these two points to these two lines simultaneously. Um, 
And basically, um, mathematically, what we're doing here is we're thinking about this point as being the focus of a parabola that has this directrix, and this point as the focus of a parabola that has this directrix. And that fold that we're going to make by taking these points to these lines um, is a mutual tangent line to the two parabolas. Now, the way, um, the easiest way to do this is to get those two points so that they're at the edge of our paper. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you fold this one back first or, or this one back first, but we just want to find those two points and see how it's, it's helpful. Um, actually, here, let's fold. <laughs> I say it doesn't matter, but if we want to be able to see that on the other side, let's fold the left hand first and then the top. Yeah, so now we can see those really clearly. And so basically what you want to do is you want to slide your paper along until you find where this point hits this line, um, hits that horizontal line, and this point hits that vertical line. And I actually um, don't even like to fold this crease in because I think it's distracting because all we really need at this point um, is to know where these land. And actually this one isn't even um, that important. It's really this point that's the important one. So let me show what I did again, right? We folded in half, in half, folded the top to the center, the left to the center, and then I fold the bottom to the first quarter to get this point. Then to get these two points here, I fold the left quarter back, the top quarter back, and I line up those two points on those two lines. All right, so I'm gonna open the whole thing back up. And now what we wanna do is I want a um, vertical line through this point, okay? And um, this is one of our origami axioms that says um, we can always construct a perpendicular to a given line through a point on that line. And so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to fold this onto itself at that point. And I think the easiest way to do it is to go backwards so that we can see that point. So I'm just going to carefully line that up, give it a little pinch. All right, so I've got that. And so now I know where that needs to be. And we can either do this to the front or back, but essentially what we're going to do um, either way is we just want to make sure that this line perfectly hits on that line. And we can also check to make sure the bottom and the top edges both perfectly line up before we make that crease. Okay, so I've got this crease in. And now this next step is a little bit tricky. So what we're going to do is we're going to construct a crease through the origin, so through the very center of the paper, that takes this point onto this line. And I find that the easiest way to do that is if we have um, this point at the edge of the paper. And then what I do here, um, actually, so 
yeah, actually this, this might be better. So if I put this point um, at the edge like this by folding that back, and what I want to do is I want to put this point on that line while making a fold through the origin. And basically I just kind of slide that point along that line until it looks like it's perfectly going through the center. And now that crease that we just made is a 1 pi over 7 angle or a um, 360 degrees over um, 14. So that's half of one of our sevenths. Now if I open this back up, because I folded those two layers at the same time, I have an entire seventh of a circle between this line and this line. Now, unfortunately, we can't treat this edge as one of the seven edges of our heptagon, um, because if we did, it would be too big for our square and it would be cut off. So what we have to do instead is we're going to treat this point as a vertex and we're going to need to find all of the other edges going around. Now, what I'm going to do is just um, find all those divisions of the polygon first, and then we'll go about um, finding the edges. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two creases and I'm going to extend them all the way across the paper. So I've got my paper opened back up and I'm going to fold carefully back along that crease and I'm going to crease all the way across. And we're actually going to make um, 14 divisions of our circle, not seven, um, because typically um, you want creases at each radius of your polygon and each apothem. Um, so let me put this one back in. Now that one, because it was folded over, um, we folded two layers at the same time. This one's maybe not quite as exact, but Hopefully uh, this will be a good, um, good heptagon. It's been a little while since I've folded one. Um, don't get discouraged if, uh, especially if your first one um, is not as perfect as you would like. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we've got these first two creases and of course our, our horizontal. Now we've got to go around and fill in the rest of them. One thing we need to be super careful about is to be mindful of this vertical crease because it is not one of our radial lines in our heptagon. It is neither a radius nor an apothem and it's just gonna kind of frustrate us and, and get in the way. Okay. So what we want to do is copy these angles all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I want to activate this crease as a mountain and this crease as a valley. And I just want to gently bend my paper like so. And then notice over on this side, this crease will flatten. And so what I want to happen here 
practice for my paper to flatten like this. So I can kind of think about it as, as these are activated. And I'm going to let my paper flatten. Like so. So let me show that again. So I'm activating this crease as a mountain and this crease as a mountain. And I'm activating this crease as a valley. And I'm letting it fold flat. And so that gives me one half of that crease. I'm going to fold it the opposite direction and I'm going to extend that crease across my paper and I'm going to draw it in. Okay. So, looking good so far. I need one more here and two more here. So we're still missing three creases. All right, so do you remember what we did? We're gonna activate this one as a mountain, this one as a valley, and this one as a mountain. So, sorry. Mountain here mountain here, valley here, and this is where that vertical crease, um, sorry, I apologize for the light, um, that's where that vertical crease is going to kind of want to get in the way. But if I think mostly just about these two as mountains, and then that's flat, and activating this one as a valley, and then just letting this fall flat, putting in that crease, so there we go. And then extending it across, and I'm going to draw it in. And we're almost there. Two more radial lines to go. And I'm going to Rather than continuing to copy this one across, I'm going to copy that direction. Um, just because the more you copy them, the more error you're going to introduce. So I'm going to activate this as a mountain and this as a valley. Okay, but I need one over here to compensate, and that's going to be. Let's see which one. Hang on. Let's figure this out real quick so I can tell you which one it's going to be. This one. Okay, so I want to activate these two creases as mountains. That's what I'm going to let fall flat. And then I'm going to activate this crease as a valley. And I'm going to let it fall over, like so. Open it up. Crease it the opposite direction. Very, maybe I didn't put it in tight enough there. I want to make sure when I crease it back the other way, it doesn't accidentally put in a new crease. Sometimes it helps to kind of do it in the air. So I've creased it the opposite direction, and I'm extending across. And I'm going to draw in my line. Oops. All right, so we're just missing one more here. And let's see, I'm going to activate this one, 
this is a mountain, this is a valley, and give me just a second. No, not that one. Not that one. Which one is it? Uh... <laughs> Hang on now. Well, if I put this valley in and that mountain, and I'm sorry, I keep folding my paper way too much. Um, this is, okay, this is how we had it originally oriented. So I've only got these two, and so I want to go this direction and like this. So I know that's not um, as obvious. Um, so let's see what might be. Okay, I'm going to activate these two creases as valleys, and this one next to it as a mountain, and I'm going to let it fold that way. And I've got it there. it over. I think the other ones I, I did all the other directions so maybe it, it might be helpful if I, I did that one the other direction just to kind of show you what that would look like. So I'd be activating um, these two creases as mountains and that one. So those two as mountains this one is a valley and then folding it over. Now what's helpful about having them folded as valleys this direction is because you know I can use the paper as its own ruler for drawing lines. All right so we've got all our radials. Um, we're almost done um, basically, all we're missing at this point um, are the boundaries of our heptagon. And just to kind of check to see how well we did, um, what's kind of nice to do at this point is to kind of go around and um, accordion fold your creases back and forth. Um, to kind of see, you know, if they they line up, and mine's pretty good. <laughs> All right. So now, if I want, um, where were we? So this, um, these two little crosses were um, north and uh, southwest. So if I want this point to be a vertex. That means that the side of my heptagon is going to go through this point and it's going to be perpendicular to this first radial off of the horizontal. So what I'm going to do is I want to fold that crease onto itself through that point right at the edge. And you want to be super, super careful that you get this as exact as you can. Now, what we could do at this point, right, now that we know where that line needs to be, is we could accordion fold this back and then just cut across with, um, with scissors or a cutting tool. Um, but I am going to go ahead and show you how to fold the rest of those creases in. Um, the second one is kind of easy because we can just fold it in half and match, um, match it up on the other side. So that's kind of nice. So there, now I've 
got two of those. So then my next two edges, I think are, are kind of um, some of the trickiest to put in because they're going to go through these points and they're going to be perpendicular to those next pair of edges, um, excuse me, this edge and, and uh, radials, excuse me, so perpendicular to that next set of radials. And it's going to come really close to hitting where this radial hits the edge of the paper, but it's not going to hit it. So you'll be tempted to just go from here to here, but that's not correct. So let's take a look at that. So I want to go through that point, and I find it kind of helpful to just sort of pinch it there first. And then I want to line that crease up with itself. And I'm going to fold across. And so you can see there's a little bit of space up here. Um, where it, it, it didn't go quite to the edge. Please ignore this crease that I accidentally put in. Not correct. I want to put in this one. So um, I want to pinch here and I want this line to fall on itself. fold that back. Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four of our heptagon edges. We want to put in the last three. So I'm going to go through this vertex perpendicular to here. So again, I'm going to pinch at that vertex, line that crease up along itself, and then carefully crease all the way across. I'm going to fold it back. And <laughs> let's make sure I don't make the same mistake I accidentally did right here. Um, so this <laughs> one is the one I want next. So I'm going to pinch it there, line this crease up on itself. Give it a nice tight crease. I'm going to fold it back and then we're just missing our last edge um, which will be um, parallel to the edge of the paper. So I'm going to rotate this around a little bit make it easier to pinch here and pinch here. I like to pinch at points, especially when I'm folding a crease directly between those two points, because two points define a line. And also I can check to make sure that this crease um, is falling along itself. Okay. And there we go. We have our regular heptagon. Now, from here, you know, you can um, take scissors if you want to cut this out, um, or you can score it really well back and forth. Um, and very carefully tear the leftover paper off. Um, that's up to you. And then for the um, for the exercise that we're going to do, um, you'll want to do make a couple of these. I recommend, you know, trying to fold a few, um, and then. You can always, once you have one that's that's really nice, um, you can just trace it. So there's our heptagon.
Thanks for folding along with me.